What's up, y'all? My name is Rhino Spartan, and recently I asked myself the question, what is better, a clang drive or a gravity drive? Well, let's find out. The better contraption is going to be decided within four rounds. The first round is going to decide which contraption has a better use of power for acceleration. The second round is going to decide which contraption is more stable and safer to use. The third round is going to determine which one has a better component cost. And the fourth round is going to determine which contraption has better overall usability. Without further ado, let's get into this. Starting off with the Clang Drive, really the only thing that takes up a lot of power is the gyroscopes. Each one requires an input of 10 megawatts, I believe. And there are a total of 8 of them, so in total this contraption is using 80 megawatts of required input. Let's see how fast it accelerates. Make sure to keep your eye on the speedometer. From zero to max speed, it took approximately two seconds. Not too shabby. All right, let's move on to the gravity drive. Instead of using the mass blocks, I have to. I had to use the space balls because the mass blocks take up the 600 megawatts of required input, whereas the space bolts don't appear to take up any for some reason, meaning all the power is going towards the gravity generator. Let's see, let's see how fast this one accelerates. Looks like the Clang Drive takes the lead. Let's move on to round two. Starting off again with the Clang Drive, if you remove the gyroscopes from the contraption, let's just say it doesn't go so well when you close the hangar door. If you played Space Engineers for a while, you will know what I'm talking about. It is the forces of clang. Allow me to demonstrate. Without the gyroscopes, this thing goes pretty much wherever it wants to. And if you build it incorrectly, it will probably result in an explosion. The gravity drive is significantly easier to build and is also substantially more stable and doesn't require any gyroscopes to try and keep it in line. You just activate and it goes in a perfect straight line. So I guess the gravity drive takes this round. The clang drive and the gravity drive are both tied up. Let's move on to round three. All right, grinder pretty set up. Let's determine which one uses less components. Now keep in mind, I made sure that both of these contraptions reached max speed at the exact same time, at exactly two seconds. All right, let's see the component cost. It's mostly steel plate, but the rest of it doesn't, it's not too crazy. All right, let's move on to the gravity drive. How much does this contraption cost? Holy smokeroos, that is a lot of components. 
especially the gravity comp. That stuff is expensive. If you compare the two, you can see there is a significant difference in component cost. Looks like the Clang Drive wins this round, but the Gravity Drive has one more chance to tie up with the Clang Drive. Unfortunately, when it comes to overall usability, gravity is the one thing that stops the gravity drive. Gravity generators, unfortunately, do not work in, in natural gravity fields, whereas the Clang drive could not care less and reaches the same speed as it would in space. Even though the Clang drive is better, the gravity drive is still a brilliant contraption, but I still like the Clang drive more. Like it. This is brilliant, but I like this. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye bye